Welcome to the Blue Security Podcast, a weekly podcast for information security defenders, where we bring you discussions on best practices, tools, and implementation for enterprise security. Now, here are your hosts for today's show, Andy Ja and Adam Brewer. Welcome to this week's episode of the Blue Security Podcast. I'm Andy, your host. And I'm Adam, your co-host. Boy, do we have a good show lined up for tonight, Adam. Last week, we had kind of prepped and talked about cloud laps because it was brand new it was just released on a friday and because you and i are in security now and we're a little bit farther removed from the device management world this wasn't something that we were up on and you know we had to spin up on it so we are going to do a show on that but before we talk about that what i wanted to talk about which ties into device management a little bit is local admin rights and a change that Microsoft is doing for our machines. If you've been a listener of the show, you may know that both Adam and I and a lot of the information workers, whether it's a workplace joined device or it's an Azure AD joined device, we actually have local admin rights to that machine. Even though for many years our guidance has been For security purposes, you should remove local admin rights. It was a do as I say, not as I do kind of mantra. And we also had the ability to workplace join our personal devices. So I had a couple Windows devices that were owned by me, purchased by me, and then we workplace joined it, which meant that you would still sign in with your MSA or your Microsoft account, like your at outlook.com account. And then ones that were autopilot or ones that you wanted to like fully manage, you can either do a self-driven or an autopilot if it was registered with a company and do an Azure AD joint device. Now, if you look at device management as a whole, whether it's company owned or personal devices, there's really like four, five if you count Linux, but four major categories for the most part, iOS, Android, Windows and Mac. And with iOS and Android, that technology is very mature and it's mostly controlled by Google and Apple. And we've talked about that where there's only certain features that they expose to MDM solutions and, you know, providers can then choose which APIs they want to implement in their solutions. And it's really the same thing with Mac too. Mac is pretty fleshed out. Um, Companies like Jamf in tune with Microsoft implement all the things that you pretty much do. Jamf pretty much implements all the things that Apple provides for Macs. We don't have all of those settings, but Intune has it pretty fleshed out. Windows, because it's owned by Microsoft, I think can get a little bit more difficult just because there's this whole workplace join that has been around where you can take a personal device and then still enroll it in Intune, or you can do this Azure AD join which is a different state. Um, With Linux, you can still actually do Intune now, which is fairly new capability. You can also do Microsoft Defender for Cloud Apps as a CASB within the Edge browser. So there's some new things coming there. But Windows, I think, is the hardest to manage, in my opinion. And while Workplace Join is a viable option, you can enroll it in Intune, you can deploy applications, you can even onboard it to Defender for Endpoint or deploy your EDR app so that it's on there and protecting. I know that at my previous org, we had considered deploying Zscaler out to people who decided to enroll in Intune. And those are definitely options, um, but it does keep you logged in as that MSA, that identity that you log into is the MSA. And because of that, there are certain things that aren't available to do as far as security and configurations. Well, Microsoft very recently, through a phase rollout, told everyone that all workplace joint devices are no longer allowed. They will lose access to corporate devices, so we need to either remove them or move them to Azure AD Join, which you technically can do just by doing it in the operating system but then you have to like log out log back in and it's essentially a whole new user profile or you can wipe and reload windows and just azure to join it from the start and i think the intention 
is to eventually remove local admin rights through a setting which is fairly new in account protection under Intune where you can manage the local administrator's group and then use the newest feature called Endpoint Privilege Management to essentially manage the elevation of applications that need administrative rights. At first, for me, I definitely was torn about it because as a power user, I like having administrative rights, installing things that I need. But as a security professional, I definitely understand it. And I think, Adam, you and I, we talked about it through the pre-show and after we talked about it through the endpoint privilege management parts, which I think I'll let you go through that and what we found out. But I felt a lot better because I think this endpoint privilege management solution is actually fairly fleshed out and removing admin rights won't be as painful as I thought it was going to be. Yeah, we had a really interesting pre-show where we started digging into the new Windows Labs capability in Intune and Azure Active Directory, which then spawned the question I asked Andy, okay, but is the default when you do an Azure AD join that your user, the device owner, is an administrator? How do you take their administrator privilege away from them? And I said, I know you can do it with autopilot where you can set an autopilot policy that the device owner account is not an administrator. They're a standard user. And then we got down the path of it's a relatively new release as part of the Intune suite called Endpoint Privilege Management or EPM. And we discovered that there are some capabilities there to deal with this as well. But before we go too far down that path, I want to clarify a couple of things. Everything Andy's talking about, this is for Microsoft employees. And Andy and I, of course, both work for Microsoft. If you're a listener of the show, you know that. And so what we're talking about, Microsoft IT often considers itself the first and best customer of Microsoft um, as a software company and a platform company. And we try to lead by example, and here's some good practices for how to manage your local devices. And like Andy said, there's always been a little bit of a conflict because there's been conflicting guidance in terms of local administrator accounts, but really pretty laissez-faire, to be perfectly honest, as far as uh, what devices you can use. They had to be managed, of course, but for the most part, that was really the end of the requirement. I can tell you for sure that like during the pandemic, I got my company refresh came. I was able to get a new device. And I said, well, great. I want the most powerful, amazing device you can get me which at the time was a 15 inch surface book three. And the thing weighs like, it's a pretty heavy device. <laughs> um, it's super powerful. Um, but I discovered that it doesn't really fit on an airline tray table. And so I wanted something more portable for travel. So I went out and bought because I was not going to be up for refresh for a long time, a surface laptop four, and I was able to unbox that set it up with my consumer Microsoft account. And then I was able to do what Andy talked about, that workplace join, which really just means the identity that's signed in is not a corporate identity, but we're going to put it under corporate management. Really very similar to like managing an iOS device in that same concept of this device is signed in with like a consumer Apple ID, but we're going to bring it under management. And really from a perspective of how Microsoft managed our like employee devices, there wasn't a whole lot of difference between a device that was managed that had been Azure AD joined versus workplace joined. Ultimately, that's just the identity that you're signing in with. And I remember even saying when we were hearing rumors of some of these changes, I don't really understand what the difference is ultimately, which identity I'm signed in with as long as it's under management and meets all the management criteria they set. And I could do everything with a workplace join device. I could do with an Azure AD join device, because again, we're, we're separating out the difference of device management versus device identity, which if you get hung up on this, go back and listen to some of our episodes with Shannon Fritz. We did two with him and he does a good job of parsing out those differences. 
And so, like Andy said, we got this email that said, hey, Workplace Join people, your days are numbered. We're moving you to Azure AD Join. And it was like, well, why? Well, and then it came out that for Azure AD Join devices, they're going to be enrolled in the Intune Endpoint Privilege Management, that, that premium feature of Intune suite. And that actually is the capability then to move administrative users to standard users and do kind of a just-in-time elevation uh, when it's needed. And then to set additional kind of gates for what that looks like when you do elevation. Do you have to reprovide your corporate credentials? Um, do you have to provide a, vi- a business justification? And what was the other one, Andy? I'm blanking. So there's two methods. You either deny all requests, which okay. is the default, or you can require a user confirmation. And then as part of that confirmation, user you can confirmation. require those two things, which you just said, a business justification or an additional elevation uh, authentication uh, when the UAC essentially comes up. Got it. And it is actually distinct from UAC as well. It calls that out in the documentation. They're kind of separate but related uh, things. And so as we talk through this, and this is where Andy was talking about, we started to feel better about it. We discovered that ultimately, at least our perception is, that's really there to kind of make users go stop and pause and think about what they're doing. Like, should I really approve this? And if you ask for a business justification, then they definitely need to at, you know, say why they want to install uh, candy crush or whatever on their device. Um, but I think even if, if without doing that, just adding that extra rigor can really help add the layer of protection. Of course, it's an auditable event. So if something does go awry, you can go back to the user and say, hey, why'd you do this? Why did you go through with this? Um, And that'll help, right? So, I mean, I think that's interesting. I had this perception, and Andy, I think you did too, that it was going to be more like I'd have to say, please, can I escalate my privileges? And some deity somewhere would, would approve or deny that request based on what I had written down. And for the most part, that's not a workflow that exists today, maybe in the future. But I think at a company like Microsoft with, you know, 200,000 FTEs, that's not manageable to have to individually approve those requests. Um, And so I think adding that additional rigor is the way to go. So uh, certainly interesting for sure, I think made me feel better um, about maybe taking like that personally owned Surface Laptop 4 I mentioned and in um, having it become Azure AD, Azure AD joined and, and having it be under management on top of that. Um, I won't be, a, I won't be a local admin all of the time, but I think I will be able to elevate to get work done or, or do whatever I need to do. And that seems pretty comforting to me. I, I don't see that as being um, really invasive, but also delivering that additional level of security that Microsoft's looking to achieve. So that seems actually pretty balanced. And it's amazing how, as we were unpacking this literally tonight in the pre-show before we went on the air, we were both kind of like, oh, that's not so bad. I feel a lot better about that. Yeah, I think any company that has tried to remove admin rights and figure out, and and to be fair, I, I don't even think you need to remove admin rights for endpoint privilege management. You might have to, but in the documentation, it doesn't say anything that that's a requirement. Mm -hmm. But in general, I think removing admin rights is a difficult thing. Like anyone who may have implemented like carbon black back in the day, which was, you know, very difficult to manage. I was just thinking about all the requests that would come in for, Oh, I need this application added to the allow list. I need this application. And it was very user and, um, help desk intense, uh, and I was just thinking for Microsoft, like with the number of users we have, devices that we have, like how they would manage that. And the documentation for APM, like Adam said, made us both feel better that it will pretty much be business as usual, what it appears. And we will probably update you guys when we it actually happens to us. But it's just an additional prompt or business justification or an additional authentication when administrative rights are required or elevated privileges are required. So seems pretty flushed out and 
We'll see how it goes. We'll do some real world testing soon enough, right? And yep. and we'll report back for sure. So some big changes afoot um, right now for people who have anything other than like just the company issued. Here's your one device. It's already autopiloted and has already joined and go do that. So I think for a lot of our our peers, Andy, that we work with, they're not going to notice anything. I mean, a lot of the sellers I work with, they take their one issued device and wouldn't know otherwise. But I think you and I both have taken advantage um, of the flexibility we have to use the devices where we work best. And um, that's been interesting. And I think I'm curious about now, and I realize the Mac is just fundamentally a different platform, but essentially the Mac remains more of that workplace join kind of model. And, and there is no rollback of admin privilege on the Mac um, as of yet. So of course you can still be an admin um, on your Mac, your identity on a Mac is a local identity and uh, it's enrolled and in tune that way. So maybe, maybe something to come there in the future. But for right now, if you just want to have a device that you can use for work at Microsoft that has standing admin privilege, Mac OS is the way to go. Isn't that ironic. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so now let's talk about local admin management and cloud laps. Yes. And over the years, there's been a lot of different ways that IT shops have managed that local administrator, the built-in administrator. You might have started off with like a shared IT help desk password. Yep. Which is terrible. <laughs> and then the but, help desk uh, manager got fired and we had to go change it. Yeah, yep. exactly. Because yep. then you'd know Move every single... That. You know, the local administrative password for every single machine that was domain joined. Mm -hmm. um, Labs came out a, quite a while ago, and that stands for local administrator password solution. And that does require some infrastructure to be deployed on premises, security groups to be delegated with permissions to access and manage lap. You have to use PowerShell and or Active Directory. There's GPO templates specifically for Labs that have to be deployed on your DCs, and then they have to be applied to your workstation OUs. And then when you access LAPS, there's a LAPS UI that has to be installed on a machine with line of sight to the domain controller and a user that's logged in with those delegated permissions. So a lot of things, right? And it's all surrounded by all that legacy infrastructure, on-prem, domain controllers, group policy. Mm -hmm. And for so long, this is probably the number one requested feature that we come across is the ability to manage that local administrator through Intune or the cloud. Mm -hmm. And there was an MVP solution that was available to do this. It wasn't the easiest to deploy, but it worked. It was kind of supported by the program managers ish because the MVPs do talk to program managers and um, it wasn't, like discouraged to use, let's just say. Mm -hmm. But the news thing is there was a security update that baked in this feature called Windows Laps into Windows 11. And now you can use Azure and Intune to configure and manage Cloud Laps. Some prerequisites, you do have to have um, Windows 10, 20H2 or later with this April 11th security update, as, as well as um, Windows 11, 21H2, with the update um, or a Windows Server 2019 with the Windows 11 update. You also need to be licensed for Intune. You need to be using Azure AD, but you don't need to have a license. Technically, you could be using the free version or the premium, whatever it's called, uh, version of Azure AD. Um, and so those are the prereqs and the policies are located in the Intune Admin Center under Endpoint Security Account Protection. We talked about that setting just previously because there's actually a drop down to manage the local users group. But for this one, there is something called uh, Windows Laps. So uh, it's actually local administrator password solution. And you might have heard me mention Windows Server 2019. And you're like, well, Andy, you can't manage servers using Intune. Aha. But because this setting is under endpoint security, 
you can technically use Intune or Cool Management if you've offloaded device configuration endpoint protections, that slider, off to Intune. Or you can use something called MDE Attach, which that's the old name. The new name is Security Management for Microsoft Defender for Endpoint, but that's such a mouthful. <laughs> um, essentially, you're using Defender for Endpoint to manage those security settings. And that's all you need. You just need to onboard a, a Windows device or server to Defender for Endpoint. And then these endpoint protection policies can be applied to that machine without having to use Intune. And that applies to servers. So if you're using servers and you're using Defender for Endpoint, you can use MDE to manage them using MDE Attach or Security Management for Microsoft Defender for Endpoint. Wow. Take a breath. <laughs> <laughs> um, so of course, Intune is the best way to manage this or uh, a Microsoft solution. However, uh, Windows Labs is actually exposed through the, the CSPs in Windows. Um, so any Windows management solution that knows how to call out to the proper CSPs and builds a UI around it could support this as well. So Intune is technically not a requirement. It's just the first and best experience. Um, but just want to call that out that you know, if you want to get really crazy and roll your own or, or call CSPs manually, you can do it that way too. And actually it is documented. I, I stumbled onto it by accident. So just to clarify, it's, it's exposed through the standard man, um, like modern windows management controls. Right. You don't need to use Intune to manage it, but you do need to be licensed for mm -hmm. Intune. Mm -hmm. Right. Good call. So once you go into the policy, there's a bunch of configuration settings. The first one is a backup directory, which you can back it up to Azure AD only or Active Directory only. Those are the only two choices. Or you can keep it disabled for a backup directory. You can also specify the password age. And to be clear, it's the password age of the local administrative password. So these configuration settings are for your local administrative password, not for your password expiration as far as users go. So you could specify the password age of that lapse password, either a minimum of one day if it's being backed up to AD, seven days minimum if it's getting backed up to Azure AD, and then you can go up to a max of 365 days. It defaults to 30 days. You could rename the local administrator with a custom name, or you can leave it as default as administrator. You can also change the complexity or require complexity of that password. You know, all the options are there. Capitalization, uh, capital letters only, capital and lowercase, numbers, you know, special characters, so on and so forth. You can specify the length. It defaults to 14. It's a minimum of eight, maximum of 64. And then there are post-authentication actions, which is what do you want to do once that lapse password has been used on a machine and by default, it'll rotate it um, within a certain time frame. You could have the machine reboot even. You can log out that user. You know, there's a few options there. Um, and then you, there's a post authentication delay. If you want to specify, you know, wait an hour before you take those actions. Um, so, and you can also go into the device itself and manually rotate it. Like when you go into the device, if you're familiar with Intune, there's abilities to like do a fresh start or, you know, do a scan of MDE manually, but there's also this now option to rotate that lapse password if you have the solution deployed. And just with like any other Intune policy, you can have scope tags. Um, you have to specify the assignment to either users or device groups. Um, when you go to the device, you can also see that local admin password and when the rotation will be. So if you have the right permissions. And that's a little bit scary because as soon as I read that, I was like, well, who can go to the device <laughs> and see the password and see the next rotation? Of course, because it's Azure AD, remember that you can then have conditional access policies for the admin portals. You can require MFA. So all this stuff, right, before you can do that. But then you can also restrict access to this policy in general. To create an access lapse policies, you have to be endpoint security manager within Intune. To rotate the local admin password, like we just talked about, you have to have Intune permissions to read 
um, manage devices and read the org, as well as the remote task to rotate local admin passwords. And then there are permissions within Azure Active Directory if you need if you want to retrieve those local admin passwords. And then, of course, by default, global admins and cloud device admins within the Azure AD roles, they have the necessary permissions by default to do all of these things. And so if you're thinking about deploying it, just um, I would take a look at some of the um, issues that have come out since April 11th. We're reporting on this on the 28th now. And there was a confirmed issue with legacy laps. If you have legacy laps and then you install the update, then both legacy laps and the Windows laps will break. And so if you haven't installed the update and you have laps, I would hold off on installing the update. If you've installed the update and you have laps, you probably already encountered this bug. Um, and if you install the update, don't deploy legacy laps because that will break. So um, there is an interop bug. I think they're working on it, um, but there's some caveats. So take a look at that if you have legacy laps or if you're you know, thinking about deploying it. I don't know why you would think about deploying it now when Cloud Labs is out, but <laughs> definitely don't deploy it after the update. I was impressed at this release because to be honest, <laughs> this is something that's been vaporware forever. I mean, forever and ever uh, long time listeners of this show know that Andy and I have been beating the drum for orgs to move to Azure 80 join for years because we constantly point out why have a dependency to line of sight to a domain controller at this day and age. And a lot of times customers come back with and they say, okay, well, how do I manage local admin on Azure 80 join devices? And, you know, we've talked about like, oh, well, you can put the local device administrator in uh, here and you can do just in time elevation with Azure 80 PIM and that works great. And like, there were some things to do. And like you said, there was an MVP solution for this, but ultimately a lot of orgs can have a workflow they're comfortable with as far as when we need, administrative privilege on a device and bringing that kind of analog forward, not analog, bringing that kind of model forward and implementing it in a way that's modern, but also familiar is just a huge win. I'm just, I'm honestly shocked at, at how well done this is. And it was just, it was kind of a surprise how it was just, Oh, Hey, you know, remember patch Tuesday, three days ago. Yeah. Buried in that release was the new Windows laps. And now we've turned on all the settings in Intune and you can go play with it now. Like what? Like of all the things kind of like sneak launch, it was kind of funny. Um, but this is one of the last big rocks to move for orgs to move, be able to move to Azure 80 join now. Um, Cause GPOs are never coming folks. So that's one of those where like, I don't say never a lot, but I will say GPOs are never coming to Azure AD join just because fundamentally the architecture is different. And so that's something where you're just going to need to go through that process of re-evaluating what settings you need in 2023. But this gets you there on local administrator. And if it doesn't, then the endpoint privilege management feature of Intune Suite could, or maybe both. So you have all the tools you need to get to where you want to be now. So kind of your last excuse is gone. <laughs> and I know listeners of this show have probably already been well down the path, but if you have encountered resistance in your orgs for whatever reason, this enables you to kind of move forward now. And I think that's really what's exciting here. It's not the technology for technology's sake. It's what it enables. And I think this is going to unshackle a lot of orgs to finally take that step forward. And that's what I'm excited about. I, I think, again, this was a surprise. And I think the quality of the implementation is great. And it's always exciting when something that's been talked about for so long finally launches. This has to be something I've talked about almost my entire Microsoft career now, six years and counting. Um, because I, I remember hearing about this forever and ever ago. 
And I, I remember talking to the PG back when Daniel Stefaniak was still here. And he told me like, you know, it's on, it's on the roadmap, but we haven't even started the engineering effort for it. Like it's that far away. And so it's exciting that now this is generally available. That's kind of cool to see that all the way through. So um, really, really cool stuff here. I, I do want to add something as well. So one thing we really didn't touch on a whole lot because, you know, otherwise the show might get five hours long is like, how do you get to a scenario for Azure 80 join devices when you would use this? Because again, if you just do the out of box experience and say, I want to join this device to my company, if you don't already have an autopilot policy assigned to that device, maybe because you don't know about it, you've never seen it before, then that user is going to become an, a local administrator and you would need to take some sort of action to you know, remove that administrative privilege so that you can use the local administrator account. And I also believe that the default behavior for Azure 80 joint devices is that the local administrator account is disabled by default. So those are things you may need to figure out how to address um, with autopilot. You can say that the device owner is not an admin. They're a standard user. Um, I still don't think that gets you that local administrator account enabled, but I think Andy, we, we suspect that if you're using this windows lapse and Intune and you define what administrator account you want to use with it, it's going to do that enablement as part of it. So there's a, there's a couple of things to kind of test and poke at here as you use it, but just be aware of like, if you're saying, well, how do I get all my users to not be admins? Um, that's probably another conversation for another time, but this gives you the other piece of the puzzle, right? It gives you that credible alternative model now where you have a local administrator account. You, you can look up the password. The password gets rotated um, on an automatic interval after you use it. Um, or, or just regardless, even if you don't use it after so many days as well. So really, really cool stuff, really exciting. It's, it's almost kind of funny, um, that there is that one caveat. Um, hopefully that gets addressed quickly, but I think for most of our users, it shouldn't be too big of a deal. So very cool. Yeah. A lot of exciting stuff. It was so new that honestly, I haven't even had time to really deploy it in my demo tenant to play around with it. But the fact that you can specify a custom administrator name mm -hmm. says to me that we've probably addressed this. We'll either enable the administrator that's built in, or we're going to add that custom name as an administrator when you deploy the policy. Yeah, right. absolutely. So. I've got a couple of uh, old surface pros behind me. And so I, want to get this going in my demo environment and deploy some policy to them and poke at it and try it out. Yeah. Well, that's our show for this week. Thanks for listening and watching as always. Our contact information will be in the show notes. If you have any questions or future topics you want us to talk about. Thanks. We'll talk to you guys next week. Thank you for listening to the blue security podcast. Please check out the show notes, catch up on episodes you may have missed and subscribe. So you don't miss any future episodes. Find Andy on Twitter at a jaw zero and Adam at AJ Brewer. See you at our next episode.